There are only 50 days or so left to go before Taiwan's 2024 election. The whole world is watching as it may affect the Asia Pacific region and even the future world landscape. There were four presidential contenders, but those familiar with Taiwan politics may know that there were in fact only two rivals in this election. The current DPP government in Taiwan and the Chinese Communist Party or CCP regime. Why is that? Let's take a look at the candidates who are referred to by color in Taiwan. Currently, the top ranked candidate in the polls is Lai Ching De. He belongs to the Green Camp DPP and is the Vice President of the Republic of China, or ROC. The DPP is one of Beijing's most hated political parties because of its strong anti CCP stance. The Green Camp candidate incumbent Vice President Lai is currently leading in the polls. In the opposition is the Blue Camp candidate Ho Yo Yi of the KMT, Taiwan's centuries old party, who has a long background in police affairs and whom we call Sheriff Ho. In recent years, the White Camp Taiwan People's Party Kerwin Zhe has risen to prominence. Before he entered politics, he was a doctor or Dr. Ker. Another is Terry Guo, the founder of Taiwan's Foxconn Group, one of the major suppliers of Apple. Gua managed to get the signatures of more than 1 million Taiwanese to qualify as an independent candidate. In the past, especially in the last three decades, during the phase of China's rapid economic development, a large number of Taiwanese businessmen entered mainland China to invest and set up factories. This has also provided convenience for the CCP to infiltrate Taiwan. The Blue Camp, the Kuomintang or KMT, fought the Communist Party as the ruling party in mainland China before the CCP took power in 1949. It retreated to Taiwan. In the last three decades, this century old party has become the CCP's most trusted partner in Taiwan. The White Camp, which claims to be centrist, has become increasingly close to the CCP in recent years. Although its attitude toward the Beijing government is not as pronounced as that of the Blue Camp. The candidacy of independent candidate Ba Gua came as a surprise to the CCP. Beijing is upset because it believes that Ba Gua would divert votes from Taiwan's opposition parties. As we previously reported, news broke on October 22nd that Foxconn Group was under investigation for tax and land use in several parts of mainland China. As soon as the news broke, it sent parent company Hanhai's share price to a two year low, with the market value evaporating by about $1.4 billion. This has not only hurt Bosco's wallet, but also the wallets of shareholders and investors around the world. So, would Bosco compromise and withdraw from the election? A month later, on November 22nd, China announced a proposed fine of 20,000 yuan, or less than $3,000, against Foxconn. With such a light fine, it was assumed that Gua's chances of stepping down were high. Sure enough, on November 24th, the last day to register candidates for Taiwan's presidential election, Gua issued a statement of withdrawal. The text was nicely crafted. Those who achieve great things don't mind their own reputation. Gua may be forgotten, but for the future of the Republic of China, I choose to step down. And that's all the love I can dedicate to my homeland. The righteous write up didn't go over well with his supporters, some of whom were so mad by Guo's spinelessness that they decided to vote for the Green Camp. Was Beijing happy about his stepping down? Not really, as on the same day came some bad news. The blue white partnership went belly up. The cooperation between the KMT and the TPP is known as the Blue White Coalition. Its main purpose was to defeat the Green Camp, the ruling party. Earlier in October, the Blue and White Camps announced their intention to work together. That is, to have both Blue and White Camps representatives appear on the same ballot as president and vice president candidates. The question is who will be the presidential candidate? The two parties decided that five candidates would be chosen for votes. The winner would be the presidential candidate, and others would be the vice presidential nominees. However, there was a dispute between the two sides on how to carry out the vote, and there was no result until the end of October 2023. At this time, Taiwan's former president Ma Ying Zhou made his appearance. 
If the interference of the CCP wasn't clear before, the appearance of the former president who was a member of the KMT clearly showed the CCP's influence. This is because when he was in power, he followed the instructions from the Beijing government. In 2014, under his strong push, Taiwan's legislature nearly passed the Cross Straits Trade and Service Agreement, which, if passed, would have given China full control over Taiwan's logistics and financial flows. It took a massive protest and occupation movement by Taiwanese students known as the Sunflower Movement to stop the agreement. It would have brought disaster to Taiwan's economy. On November 15, 2023, representatives of the Blue and White Camps held a meeting mediated by former President Ma ying -jou. Afterwards, both parties announced that they had reached a six-point agreement. In other words, the Blue-White Coalition was half successful and the Green Camp would face a strong opposition. However, the next day when Dr. Ke met his supporters, he choked up and shed tears for unknown reasons. His family and core team members also wept with him. It was a sad and odd scene. Three days later, we found out why. The two parties held a press conference separately to express their disagreement over the voting data and statistical errors, but emphasized that the cooperation between the two sides hadn't yet broken down. To the anger of the blue camp, Dr. Kerr, the representative of the white camp, disclosed the inside story to the public. He explained that he agreed to give a 3% concession in the voting duel, but the KMT demanded a 6% concession. In other words, even though the Blue Camp KMT was 3% behind, he was willing to give up his presidential candidacy to the KMT representative, Sheriff Ho. However, the actual situation was that the sheriff was 6% behind the doctor in the polls, which the doctor found somewhat unacceptable. In our opinion, instead of it being the blue camp asking for a 6% concession, it was more like the doctor was faced with high pressure from the Beijing government. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made the doctor's family cry. The blue camp was naturally embarrassed and angry. They argued that the 3% refers to the error margin of 3%, meaning that it may add up to 6%, but the actual margin wasn't 6%. After covering up the issue for several days, on November 22nd, under the media scrutiny, Sheriff Ho's office finally replied to reporters that it had never been 6%, but rather 5.96%. A few days later, Sheriff Ho even emphasized, There is no such thing as a 6% concession. I can't accept this kind of insult to my character. One can lose everything, but not one's character. When this figure was released, it came as a shock to many Taiwanese that the representative of a century-old party should ask a small party to let him have a 6% lead, or actually a 5.96% lead. The Blue Camp angrily accused the doctor of being the one responsible for destroying the coalition. Grassroots supporters from both camps were in a fight. As the bickering escalated, the Taiwanese media described the antagonism between them to have exceeded their dissatisfaction with the Green Camp. The CCP must have been pushing hard. After former President Ma ying -jou's mediation failed, Foxconn's boss Guo came into the picture. On the evening of November 22nd, boss Guo posted an agenda on his Facebook page saying that Sheriff Ho wanted him to facilitate a three-way cooperation between Blue, White, and Guo. This complicated agenda was hard for the general public to understand, and the outside world was confused as to whom boss Guo was posting his agenda for. It seems that except for the Beijing government, there was no other party that needed to see boss Guo's efforts in the Blue-White coalition. Why does Boss Guo have a role to play in this? Because elections burn money and he has long been a financer for the blue and white camps. On the afternoon of November 23rd, Sheriff Ho and Dr. Kerr were in the midst of their last negotiation for consolidation. The live broadcast of the meeting showed a dramatic exchange, with leaders from both sides going head to head and revealing sensitive private conversations. However, the talk ended up falling apart after an hour and a half. In the course of the meeting, Sheriff Ho criticized Dr. Kerr for his lack of integrity, while the doctor reprimanded the sheriff for obsessing over the opinion polls. It was like a flash romance that had split up. 
Both parties ended up ripping each other to pieces and staged a breakup show in front of a large number of media by publicly cursing each other. Some media reporters at the scene said that they all watched and laughed at the same time, just like watching a live broadcast of a family melodrama. This is a spectacle never seen before in the history of Taiwan's presidential elections. Our understanding is that the CCP mediated the election in the hopes that the blue-white coalition would win the presidential election and undercut the green camp. The ideal candidate would be from the blue camp. The blue KMT, a century-old party, wasn't willing to be relegated to the position of a subordinate role, letting the party's resources go into the hands of Dr. Kerr. So it insisted on having its own candidate to be the presidential candidate. Dr. Kerr, on the other hand, after seeing his own popularity, that is, his poll exceeded the police chiefs by quite a bit, and far exceeded the agreed margin of 3% by nearly two times, he began to feel hesitant to back down under the persuasion of his backbone members. On November 24th, the Blue-White Coalition announced that it had broken up. Sheriff Ho and Dr. Kerr each announced their own vice presidential candidates. Dr. Kerr of the White Camp and the daughter of a Taiwanese financial conglomerate registered to run as the presidential and vice presidential candidates. While the relations between China and the U.S. and cross-strait relations become even more tense, we all agree that maintaining the status quo and striving for peace is the biggest common denominator between the U.S., China, and Taiwan. The people are the foundation of a country. While striving for peace, the people are the bottom line in my heart. This doesn't change now and will never change in the future. On the other hand, the blue camp Sheriff Ho has partnered with the pro-communist media mogul and registered his candidacy for the election. Most analysts believe that the breakup of the blue-white coalition would be a disappointment to the CCP. As reported by the Wall Street Journal on the same day under the headline, China's best hope for the Taiwan presidential election just fell apart. Now, let's take a look at the dynamics of the Green Camp, the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP. Earlier, the Washington Post disclosed that the head of the CCP once warned Biden in San Francisco that he should not provide weapons to Taiwan or support Lai ching -de. The U.S., on the other hand, warned the CCP in person that it should not intervene in Taiwan's election. On the morning of November 21st, DPP presidential and vice presidential candidates became the first pair of registered candidates to run for the election. The campaign photo posted by Vice President Lai has a Japanese feel. In the center, the slogan reads, Vote for Taiwan. The Chinese says, Taiwan's virtue. The word virtue is made up of one character from each of the two candidates' Chinese names. The simple yet to-the-point campaign photo looks almost like a scene from a movie. It has attracted more than 53,000 likes so far. Fan said, just the looks alone have defeated the opposition faction. In the first TV commercial, Lai said, Steadiness is the key to making great strides forward and hope that all people would choose the right candidate and follow the right path together. Today, I am very excited to formally announce to our fellow countrymen that my running mate in Taiwan's 2024 presidential elections is Taiwan's envoy to the U.S., Ambassador Xiaobi Kim. Xiao Mei Qin was originally Taiwan's representative to the U.S., and she had a set of strategies for Taiwan's future development. We have to forge bipartisan and unified support for Taiwan. We cannot afford to let Taiwan become an interest of, uh, an issue, sorry, an issue of partisan difference in American politics. So everything we do, we do it in a bipartisan way. We do it in a way that maximizes support from our friends across the board, across the political spectrum, 
in Washington, D.C. Several analysts believe that Xiao is Taiwan's best ever representative to the U.S. It's a definite plus for Vice President Lai. Xiao has greatly enhanced U.S. Taiwan relations since she took office. In addition, she has an in depth understanding of American society and culture. This is something that no other presidential candidate or deputy can match. The CCP has issued a threat to this pairing. China spokesman said, If the rumor is true that these two people have formed a double separatist duo, what does it mean for the situation in the Taiwan Strait? What does it mean for the lives of the people of Taiwan? What does it mean for the future destiny of Taiwan? I think every Taiwan resident knows it very well. As a matter of fact, the DPP has never claimed that Taiwan is going to separate. Vice President Lai has explained on several occasions that Taiwan is not part of the People's Republic of China, and that the Republic of China and the People's Republic of China aren't subordinate to each other. The government should defend Taiwan's sovereignty against invasion from Red China so that future generations can live and work in peace and contentment on the land. He also said, I also distinguish the CCP from the Chinese people, and that Taiwan can be close to the people of China, but the belief in safeguarding and protecting Taiwan will remain unchanged. The CCP has a habit of turning a blind eye to facts. Its strategy is to use the so called separatist label to stimulate the patriotic feelings of the Chinese mainlanders, thus creating hatred for the Taiwanese Green Camp. In this context, when China's Taiwan Affairs Office said that Lai's partnership with Xiao is a separatist plus separatist scenario, it's actually saying that this pair are very determined to protect Taiwan. In reality, this is indeed the case. I believe we have lots of common convictions. We are both willing to take on responsibility for Taiwan with the common belief that Taiwan's democracy and freedom can last forever, and that is our deepest connection. If Vice President Lai is elected, it can be assumed that he will continue the current administration's practice of choosing the U.S. as a friend to combat the threat from the CCP. This is exactly what the CCP doesn't want to see. We are truly grateful for all the support that's been extended to us uh, over the years, especially as we have been um, put in a situation where the geostrategic challenges are formidable. And a rock solid partnership with the United States is critically important right now. Back in 2022, after Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, Xiaomi Qin, who was the main promoter of the visit, was name checked by China, describing her as bound to be historically discredited. On August 16th of the same year, Xinhua News Agency announced a list of the latest Taiwan separatist hardliners. Xiao's name was added to it. She responded by saying, We will not be silenced by the sanctions. On the day he registered his candidacy for president, Lai gave his views on Taiwan's future. Taiwan's security and peace in the Indo-Pacific are a focal point of international concern. The whole world is watching this election. How will the people of Taiwan ultimately choose between trusting Taiwan, allowing Taiwan to continue to move forward on the road of democracy, and relying on China, following the old path of the One China Principle and walking into the embrace of China? It can be surmised that the CCP won't give up. It'll still work hard to carry out all kinds of operations, both explicitly and privately, in the Taiwan election. A prominent writer in Taiwan wrote on a social media platform that the pro-communist and anti-American line will only bring harm to Taiwan with no benefit, and that Taiwanese should not panic in the face of the CCP's bluff. We agree with this sentiment.